We are live. Okay, hello and shalom, everyone. This is Mayim Vega from um, Aruka, aruka.com, the Holistic Life Academy. And today I have a special guest, Bobby McGrath. She is a certified regenerative health and detox practitioner with a passion for educating people about the impact of toxins, which I also love doing, and stress, which I also love talking about, on health, specializing in helping clients restore their gut, their immune and nervous systems at the cellular level. She advocates for holistic approaches to wellness, including toxin removal and regenerative health practices. Having overcome mold toxicity herself, PTSD, and chronic inflammatory response syndrome, CIRS, Bobby works with individuals, groups, um, and corporate clients to empower them in their health journeys. And she also co-leads a digital course aimed at helping practitioners and clients address mold toxicity and CIRS. Bobby holds a bachelor's in education, a master's in exercise physiology, and clinical cardiac rehabilitation, and certifications in regenerative health and behavioral change. And since 2018, she has been guiding, uh, guiding others to thrive, not just survive, through food as medicine and toxin-free living. So she definitely speaks my language. And basically, the um, the reason why I invited her is because um, I was looking for people who would share their testimonies of holistic health and healing, um, and um, also and or also um, a disappointment with the modern medical system. So um, you, Bobby, have a story about mold toxicity, among other things. But um, let's let's focus on mold toxicity because. Um, sometimes people don't really talk about that a lot. Um, how did you find out that you had mold toxicity? First of all, thanks for having me on today. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to share my message and story and I uh, appreciate you letting me come on. Um, finding out I had mold was interesting. I had become certified as a health coach in 2018. And, um, you know, when you first get started with your business and opening all of that, I was trying to gobble up a lot of information. And I was started watching a lot of summits and learning about a lot more about gut health and things like that. And started hearing more and learning more about mold. And I was like, what, what's this mold thing about, you know? And so I actually started learning about mold before I actually was heavily exposed to it. So mm. it was after I got exposed to a water damage building and had been... that, that's look I want to interrupt you real quick and say that I believe those are like divine gifts when when that yeah. stuff like that happens I agree too and I know um it actually our our cabin in northern Wisconsin flooded and at the time it was very disappointing because it was because someone had clear cut some land behind our cabin kind of illegally and changed the water table and all this water rushed into our cabin and of course we didn't know about it uh, we're not up but up there all the time because I live in the western sub suburbs of Chicago in Wheaton. And so we had to do a lot of work to get that uprighted and fixed. And then um, that's where the mold came from. Because, yes, they drained it and we raised the basement floor and did different stuff. But it had already been insulted, the building had. And so it wasn't cleaned up properly. And so mold started growing. And not only growing, but then it's that's where the HVAC system was. So it blew it all over the house. And so when I went there, I started kind of having some issues, inflammatory issues and things like that. Um, but it wasn't until I actually went down in the crawl space, my husband was showing me something and I went down there and I just got blasted with it. And we couldn't see it because a lot of uh, mycotoxins, which come from mold, um, the toxins, you can't smell and, you know, they're in the air. And so I just got really sick after that. And I've always been, I, I grew up as an athlete. And so I've always been active, always been physically fit and things. And I was starting to have issues with just doing my everyday things. And um, I was like, was it like overnight? Was it like night and day since that? What, that it was, or was it gradual? 
it was a gradual, I was being exposed for a while. And then it wasn't until I hit that um, time where I went down in the crawl space. And then within a month, I was just a mess. And mm -hmm. for me, uh, mold presents in a lot of different ways. But for me, it was really high anxiety, which I didn't mm -hmm. really, have. wasn't an, like a high anxiety person. I couldn't sleep. And then the what's you were saying, SIRS is how we call it, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, short named SIRS. My connective tissue was so sore. And, and so if I were to work out and maybe an hour later, like sit down and go do something or like work out, go to church and sit down, I couldn't even get out of the pew. I looked like I was like 95 years old because everything would just contract and hurt. And I would get up and not be able to move. I had plantar fasciitis. I had a lot, a lot of joint pain um, and a lot of brain fog and anxiety and insomnia. and it wasn't until I started kind of putting the pieces together on some of these summits and doing some research, I was like, this, this could be mold. And I had started seeing. Um, so you knew you were exposed, but you I didn't, didn't know, know that they were. I didn't know I was exposed. That's the thing. I knew I, I, well, I take that back. I could smell some mold from the old crawl space and that kind of stuff, but I didn't necessarily know that's what it was. I'm like, wow, right. when you space that's what it was so you didn't connect it you didn't no. connect your sy symptoms to the to the mold right right, right. and then even, it was even though you had learned about it previously right right exactly mm -hmm. yeah. but i when when this big blast happened and i went for a run with my friend she was training for a marathon and so we went on a hard six mile run and i couldn't get out of bed the next day mm -hmm. i was like something is really really wrong you're like, and this is not like me, right? No. And, and like everything hurt, like mm. everything, like plantar fasciitis through the roof, um, creaky knees and all that kind of stuff. And so I was working with a neurological chiropractor trying to go, because at the same time, I was also going through um, menopause. I was going through that, mm. like hit, hit menopause, like a Mack truck. I was like, I meant you had mentioned in the um, opening in my bio, I was, didn't know it really as bad as at the time, but I was also struggling with PTSD from grief and a bunch of other things that had gone mm. in my, on in my life through the decade before. Mm. And so I arrived at my mold exposure, empty, burnt out, um, over caregiving, all that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. it hit me really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And so when I was going to the chiropractor for all of these aches and pains and saying, this, something's wrong, something's wrong. He was the one that was like, you know, there's this thing called chronic inflammatory response syndrome. I think we should test you for that, or at least do a mycotoxin test where I did a urine test. And it came back that I was putting out mycotoxins in my urine. And that doesn't always, is not a really good indicator because some people can actually have mold toxicity and not be passing them out in their urine. It could be that it's stuck in them. Mm. So that was nice that we got that. But then I was like, okay, so now I have to figure out where the mold is. And at the time I didn't know, I didn't think about the water damage building or any of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was a, it was a hunt. I mean, we figured it out. We had to test some different buildings that I spend time in and stuff like that. And then we realized that's what it was. And mm -hmm. I went right to finding a doctor who really specialized in mold toxicity and got on my journey, but it took me a good year to really fully figure out that it was chronic inflammatory response syndrome that I had. Yes, I mm. had mold toxicity, but I, it took it way to another level because you can have mold toxicity and not get chronic inflammatory response diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So it, it takes a while. And I was educated. I was like, I had a lot of things that I could look into, um, but you have to put the pieces. It's a puzzle yep. piece. Yes. Yes. And so, um, why did you, why did in your, why in your situation did it, did it become CIRS? And in some people it doesn't. Yeah. That's the secret sauce. That's the secret, like genetically kind of thing. It can be your epigenetics. It can be a lot of things. So there's a lot of reasons why it can go okay. from being mold exposure to chronic inflammatory response. But the one thing I do know is that if you have a history of having nervous system dysregulation, um, high stress, um, yeah, cause you're dealing with the PTSD and menopause, like all at the same time. It's yeah. Like, oh, yeah. It's like your your immune system can only take so much at this, at one time. 
Correct. Which is which is why it was really good that um you had that ed- education. You probably, you know, ate a decent diet and tried to get the exercise and sunshine and all that. But so yeah, that's great. That's really great. And yeah. and and you knew as a health coach that you didn't have to you know settle for just whatever. That there was a a, um, a way to address the root cause through holistic methods. Exactly. And I remember my father-in-law who just turned 80 recently, this was four years ago or six years ago saying, Oh, you're just getting old. You're just getting old. Well, that's I, true. That's part of it. <laughs> I was 52 at the time. I'm like, no, I, I will not settle for this. This is not, not acceptable to me to be able in this much pain and not able to do the things no. I wanted. It just, it didn't make right. sense. Mm-mm. So right. my mom is, uh, my mom is 88 now, I think, or something like that. Wow. And um, she has some pain, but she's like, I exercise. She does housework. She cooks, she cleans and she's great. She is not an invalid or anything. She doesn't, she has some pains, but you know, mm-hmm. um, she's strong. I, I, I hope to be as strong as her when I'm 87, you know, and I know other like older people, like, you know, in their like nineties or, you know, almost a hundred. And they're still also like doing housework and dancing yeah. and, you know, all this stuff. I'm like, oh, oh, please, I, you know, I want to be like that. I know. Um, I know. <laughs> and, and people, and what I had to do, and we'll probably get into this a little more. There was quite a few things I had to do lifestyle wise. Yes. I was leading a healthy life, but to get my life back, I had to change a heck of a lot of things. And I remember even some of my friends and family, we're like, wow, you're really doing a lot of things. And I'm like, hey, if somebody told me, go stand on your head in the middle of the Eisenhower Highway and you will be cured, I probably would have done it at that point because I am just like, I'm not living like this. I'm not having my, because I had watched my parents, unfortunately, my mom passed with Alzheimer's, my dad had um, vascular dementia. They did not have golden years. They were, it was not pretty the way they passed, you know, their last, especially my mom, the last 10 to 10 years of her life. And so I was like, I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not going to do this. This is not robbing me. I'm going to figure this out. Yes. Yes. And, and as a health coach, you are trained to, you know, um, help people perform at their best and live and thrive. So how long yeah. did it take to start, you know, to start feeling better? Once you, once you discovered, you know, what it was and put the pieces together because you, you, you you already knew what to do. You just didn't know what it was. So you didn't do them. Right. Well, there is a process you go through to detox your body. So, I mean, you know, as well as anybody that you can't just go in and strip your body of of a bunch of toxins without having some possibility of feeling even worse. And that's what a lot of times people um, want to do, whether it's cancer or toxins, or whatever, they just want to get it out right away. And the problem is, is that, you know, when you are impacted by mold, your entire 11 systems of your, or SIRS at least, your 11 systems of your body are impacted. Well, that's a lot. That's, that's a lot of things you got to work on. You've got to work on your gut. You've got to work on your circadian rhythm. You've got to work on your detox pathways, which is your lungs and your skin and your elimination system are you pooping and peeing right you know enough that kind of stuff your breath work um there's so much that you have to do and that's when it can become so overwhelming and so for me the first year was really trying to get my i because i i some people with SIRS they'll um, gain a lot of weight or with mold toxicity they'll become obese um because we store actually toxins in our fat and so our body actually tries to protect us by storing mm-hmm. it in our fat cells. Mm-hmm. For me, I had such um, heavy impact on my gastrointestinal tract that my gut was so leaky. What do you call about leaky gut? Mm-hmm. It truly, mm-hmm. I wasn't even absorbing nutrients. So I lost quite a bit of weight. I was probably the thinnest I'd been in many, many, many years and even lost hair. My hair fell out. I lost a bunch of weight and people... Mm-hmm saw me and they're, they're kind of like, what's going on? And, and it was really hard to kind of say, well, I have mold toxicity. I'm working on mold toxicity. I've served because a lot of times people, that's not real common that you hear that from somebody. Um, usually if you see somebody really thin, they think the worst and think that it could be cancer. Or you're on chemotherapy. And I wasn't like that, but I was definitely thin. So for me, the first year was just trying to upright 
my gut and getting my gut to seal up and, you know, work better because if I could do that and get my detox pathways open, but the thing about the regenerative pr approach that I used to help myself, I did not know the regenerative approach until 20, 2022 when I went through the Institute of the Regenerative Health of, of Institute of Regenerative Health. And um, I became a regenerative health practitioner. So I was already a health coach, but then I went back to school because I learned in um, 20, probably 2020, right around 2021, um, a friend of mine who is a health coach, who's now my business partner, um, she brought the regenerative approach to me and said, I really think this is going to help you um, get to the next level with your re recovery. Um, and she was actually the one we met in another health coaching school. Her name is Heather Sunderland. And we met in another health coaching school and became friends, just kind of cordial friends. And she said that she was closing her website down and some other things because her Lyme had resurfaced and um, mm. she didn't know what to do and about her business. And I, I, I rarely posted in this group, but I saw it and I said, before you run off into the sunset and I don't see or talk to you again, make sure you check and see that you don't have mold toxicity because there is such a combination mm. of Lyme and mold tend to run in the same pack. Mm. Um, and so she so like one me. aggravates, the, so mold toxicity could aggravate Lyme disease. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. Yes. Yes. Or vice versa. Um, and um, she called me up and we talked for about an hour and a half and I told her about my story and I said, it might be good for you to go get some testing done and check your blood work for SIRS. And she called me back and said, I, ha I checked all the boxes. I have SIRS. I've had undiagnosed mine for 27 years, but I also have mold toxicity and I have SIRS. And so it so was SIRS like, is caused by mold toxicity always or no, not always. No, okay. you can actually get chronic inflammatory response syndrome from different things, but mold is probably the, one of the number one things that pushes okay. you into it. Mm -hmm. uh, so she, I brought her to the, her diagnosis or helped her figure out that she had SIRS. And then a year later, she called me up and was like, I think you need to check into this regenerative approach. We, I started on the superfood thing that she was using, and that's when my process picked up the pace. I joined the regenerative health um, school and got my certification for that and just really have been on this journey for the last basically two over two and a half years of diving into what is regenerative health and how that can help restore not just somebody that has mold and SIRS and PTSD like me, but a lot of different ailments and diagnoses can be improved by the regenerative approach. So that's really what I've been doing for the last two years. And because of our friendship, we decided recently when we saw a lot of practitioners struggling with mold clients or people that were misdiagnosed that actually had mold or they had SIRS and people weren't catching it because they weren't trained. And that's one of the reasons we joined forces this um, last six months, we've been working on a course to teach practitioners what does mold look like? What are the symptoms? How do you, you know, even talk to your patients or clients or, you know, your family or friends about the fact that toxins, their toxin bucket, whatever the toxin is, could be the reason that they're feeling the way they're feeling. Because I don't think a lot of people think like, oh, could my joint pain or could my um, psoriasis or could my, you know, diagnosis with IBS or Crohn's or um, my migraines that don't go away, my back pain. I don't think people really ever tie or connect the dots that it could be a toxin. And yes, I yes. I love people to start thinking that not necessarily first right off the bat, but pretty close to be like, have I been exposed? Where have I lived? You know, my son went to college and he lived in a dorm and he kept having all of this nasal kind of stuff and his freshman and stuff. And his air conditioning was leaking and they called the maintenance people and the guy opened up and it was full of mold. He'd never seen an air conditioning ever like that. And of course they got a whole new air conditioning, but here my son has spent two or three months now and his roommate getting blasted by mold coming out of an air conditioner, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And then as soon as that got fixed, he got rid of all the junky nasal junk that was going on that he never really had before he went to school. Mm -hmm. So, um, so 
so why so you're creating the course when is it going to be launched we're launching in january we're going to be having some webinars um in december and november to get people interested in what we're doing and teaching we're having a mini kind of a mini webinar course where we teach people a little bit about identifying mold and SIRS and then the course for practitioners and teaching them is going to be launching in January. And we're really excited about it because it's covering the regenerative approach, which is different than a lot of the approaches that, that are out there because it encompasses the one piece that seemed to be missing. in a lot of these approaches to helping mold and SIRS patients is the, superfoods or the the foods the alkaline diet and the things that they're eating can actually be the medicine that their body needs to mm -hmm. take that information mm -hmm. okay great yeah that's awesome yeah and um i like that you are that you that this course is focused not only towards um people who may be suffering from it but also practitioners and i think you know what a lot of people don't realize is that Medical doctors do not learn um, holistic approaches to truly healing and getting to the root cause of a lot of issues. They they learn you know pathology and they learn uh, to how to diagnose and then they learn how to treat with pharmaceuticals. But um, pharmaceuticals don't always actually usually do not um, deal with the root cause and uh, because because it's not because of a lack of pharmaceuticals that we're sick, you know, right. it's that we're not getting the proper nutrition. We're not, you know, getting rid of the toxins from our environment, from our food, from our lives, um, you know, different things. That's really great. That, that this is, um, I'm really glad that you're creating this um, and holistic, a lot of something else. Cause I think um, one, so something that, you know, people might ask, cause they're like, okay, well, maybe I think I'm, I'm suffering from mold toxicity or maybe I have um, CIRS and they might think, well, why don't I just go to a doctor? And the truth is most doctors do not, like I just said, they don't really know how to treat uh, mold the holistic way. They may, they might give you some uh, temporary inferior band-aids in the form yeah. of pharmaceuticals to, um, to kind of quiet down the symptoms but when you quiet, when all you do is quiet down the symptoms, it's like telling a child who's complaining about pain. It's like right. you're saying, you know, just be quiet. Yep. And you're like, you can tell them and they could, they can obey, but the pain will still be there. And that's, that's the same thing with your body. The, the symptoms that you're facing is your body communicating with you saying, I need help. I need help. And it doesn't need far. I'm not saying don't get pharmaceutical drugs or whatever, but I'm saying you got to go beyond that in order to truly address that cause. And unless a doctor is a naturopath and trained as a naturopathic medical doctor, they won't know. And they will have to take um, a course like yours or um, yep. another certification program um, to learn about this kind of right. stuff or, or self-study through books and, you know, whatever courses, certifications, um, et right. cetera. And, and, and one of the things that's really cool about that is that there's doctors out there that want to learn if they have the time and they don't have to go back to school and all that. They can take our course, you know, that's 12 weeks and, or it, once it's, it's going to be live for the first time and then they can do self-study if they want to take it, just watch the videos and learn. And then they, they can look at their patient through a completely different lens and ask them completely different questions that they would maybe normally ask them and you get so much farther with your client slash patient. If you can get like, get past this, the simple symptom kind of things and get down to like, what is your lifestyle? Like, what are you eating? What, you know, when you get upset, what do you do? What are your crutches in life? How is, you know, growing up where, how do you, what is the thing that you do when you get really upset? You know, just all those kinds of questions. And they don't have enough time. I mean, conventional doctors do not have enough time to do that. And so then the doc the patients left or the clients left with maybe a prescription or a test that they have to go have, but they aren't left with any answers. Like, why am I still this way? What can I do? Yeah. And, and it's sad. Yeah. Which is why I, I really, really do believe in um 
the health coaching model in in terms of having an ed, you know as as a health coach so i'm a naturopathic herbalist yes. and a holistic life coach and i you know the advantage of the health coaching model is that you are empowered with everything that you need to to overcome your challenge whereas you're never going to get that kind of um, empowerment through a one or two hour session, even with a naturopath, not that, not that the naturopath doesn't have the answer, doesn't know everything, but how is he going to get it into you in two hours? You know, we really have to empower ourselves with through education and like your, like your health coaching program. And then in addition to that, um, the support, that you give um, through a health coaching program, either yourself or, um, you know, through your team or even everyone who's in the group coaching program together, um, facing the same thing and, you know, kind of bounce ideas off each other and and things like that. It's, it's, it's a really, really powerful um, vehicle for healing. And I think it's, it is very much superior to um, the traditional, the traditional medical model, which is why, it's great to see um, medical doctors interested in learning things like this. And I have, I have medical doctors and nurses and, 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 you know, people of those kinds of professions in my Aruka holistic healer certification program as well. Um, So what is um, one thing, just one thing I, of course they need to take your program, but just one thing today that um, someone can do to make an, an impact on their current health if they are facing um, or they suspect mold toxicity or CIRS? Well, I think when they think about their environment, I think people need to stop and think about what's their current environment like, meaning where do they live? Is there a leaky, you know, something leaking? Is there water damage or history of water damage in the place that they live? So assessing where you live right now. And then also thinking backwards to where you've been, because you can have mold in your body from previous places where you've lived and exposures. Um, You can actually, um, it's kind of gets complicated, but you can actually have colonization of mold in your body. So you can be out of the moldy environment um, and still have your body internally producing the mold in your skin cells and different parts like that. Um, so I think having a, there's quick and easy tests that there's out there. And one of the things that um, I like to coach people on is that, you know, if you want to put your head in the sand and you don't, you, you're worried about like what you might find, then you're, you're really kind of at that crossroads of like, I'm, I'm really not going to get better. Um, and I'm choosing that that you know you're choosing that path by not going and like opening that door I always tell my clients picture yourself going down a hallway with a bunch of doors and those are all the decisions you're making about your health and some doors are cracked some are slammed shut and some are wide open the wide open ones are easy to go in you can look around you can do whatever you can go back in and out the cracked ones you need to spend a little more time kind of checking but the ones that are shut, the ones, the doors that are shut that you're so afraid to go and make a change, those are the ones you need to open the door. If you, you know, have someone go with you, turn on the light, go in there and look around and just explore. Think about what could be, what could it be in your past or in your, or even in your current environment that could be impacting you. If you don't know, then there's plenty of tests. There's an ERMI test, which is a dust, like a Swiffer test that you can test your environment with and you can send it off. It'll tell you how to do it. You send it off. They'll send you back a report. Those are some in- initial ways that you can check your environment. But I would just ask people to really be aware of the fact that toxins, I mean, I grew up in, I was born in 66. I grew up in the 70s. And since the 1970s, the number of toxins or chemicals that have been introduced into um our environment from farming and pharmaceuticals and the things we spray on our grass and all the things like glyphosate, that's all stuff that has come since in, since my lifetime started and yours too. And so it's kind of like, we're eventually not going to be able to not detox ourselves because of the environment that we live in. And so water is, is also something that in your environment, like what kind of water are you drinking that with, if you were to ask me, 
the very first thing somebody should do besides checking and making sure their environment is safe is what type of water you're drinking and making sure that you filter your water however you need to do and stop drinking out of plastic bottles because we take in so much water our body is a huge percent of, it, of our body is water and so if you're drinking tap water or drinking out of plastic cups and bottles and cracking little plastic you know bottles that are putting microplastics in, in there every day you're putting a load on your liver, your gallbladder, mm -hmm. your kidneys, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then just, you know, making sure that you, if you are suspecting that you maybe have a mold issue, you need to find somebody like myself that could help you take those first steps. Cause it's scary. I actually told someone a few weeks ago, um, I went to their house to pick something up and it was a friendly visit. I just met her to pick up a, a, a book for my Bible study. And I sat in her, her room for a few minutes and I left and I reacted to her house and I had to call her up and say, mm -hmm. I'm just going to give you some information. You can do with it what mm -hmm. you want, but there's something in your home that you might want to check out, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? So it, I think people don't really realize that the air we breathe on a regular basis and, you know, especially you came from a moldy home and took furniture and clothes and things like that with you. We, we drag a lot of toxins around with us when we, are going through our life and picking them up. So keep toxins at least somewhere at the top of the list when you're thinking about your health. Yes, absolutely. And that's, and this is, um, this is the holistic approach, you know, just serving, you know, whatever, what all is in your life that can be contributing to your toxic load. Um, that's yep. a big part of it. Um, I do, I have a, a book coming out soon, do this detox that, and like, yeah, half, half of the, half of the problem is things that you're doing to yourself. And then ha the other half is things that you need to start doing yes. um, for your yeah. health. Yeah. So it's um, like close the front door and um, open, you know, you got to close the front door, stop letting things in that are going to hurt you and then open the back door and let out the things, whether it's emotions, whether it's, you know, harboring feelings that you have been carrying with you from a long time ago. Um, or other things like if you're constipated all the time that's not normal I don't care if your parents were constipated now you are it's not normal to be constipated all the yeah. time no you know and people get used to feeling crappy yeah yeah and uh, yeah constipation can be really serious people don't realize uh, you should you know people that eat a very native diet, which means no, um, no processed foods, no junk food. They, um, they will use the restroom for every meal that they eat. So if they're eating two or three times a day, they're, they're going to the restroom two or three times a day. So if that's not happening, you are constipated. People don't understand. They don't really understand what constipation is because yeah. they're so used to it. You know, um, I had a client, she was saying like, you know, she goes, you know, maybe once or twice per week. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. And um, she wasn't, she didn't come to me complaining of constipation, but, you know, as a holistic healer, that's yeah. something I like, that's a question that I need answered is how many times are you <laughs> going to the restroom every week or every day, actually? And yeah. so um, she started a, um, a colon cleanse and I'm like, how do you feel? She's like, I feel great. I feel lighter. You know, yeah. I feel more energy, you know? all this stuff. So, um, and, and it's going to, if you feel better, it's, it's not, it's not always the case, but when it comes to colon cleansing, if you feel better, it's, it's also better for your body. Oh yeah. I mean, you know. keeping that stuff inside you for that long, it's just recirculating all the toxins because, you know, it's and it's preventing you from absorbing, um, nutrition from, the, from the food that you're Yep. trying to eat even if it's super if you're, if you're eating superfoods but you're constipated your body's not fully absorbing that superfood so right right yeah. and it's not great to eat healthy but if you're not like i wasn't absorbing my food so it didn't matter what i was eating if it was just going in and out of me and i wasn't getting the nutrients and that's what i tell people they're like i was talking to somebody saying that she said her son was his vitamin D is not going up and i keep giving him more and i said it's not the vitamin D it's his gut is not absorbing it and if this gut's not absorbing it, we need to figure out what it is, why his gut is injured so that it can't absorb. And it's like, it's not a lack of vitamins that he's taking. It's, it's, it's yeah. 
you know it's it, well it's it, you you put it in your body but it doesn't get in your body correct it doesn't yeah. ever make it to the cell yeah yep yep all right so i know that um you know part of what you do is making sure that people know the state of their nervous system yes um can you talk about um you know why you believe that this is one of the biggest keys to improving their health? Yes, I would absolutely love to talk about this because I don't think people, it just doesn't get enough credit. Like if people know, oh, I know what the nervous system does kind of, but I don't know how it impacts me. And like, if we just even circle back to constipation, a lot of people think, well, I need to take something for my constipation. And I'm like, how about we just start with regulating your nervous system and getting your brain to connect to your gut. And surprisingly, when people slow down and they start listening to their body, you were talking earlier about um, the body talking. Well, the body starts out with a whisper and it whispers and it whispers and it tells you and it talks a little louder and a little louder until eventually it screams. And so what I try to teach people is listen to the whispers, try to get quiet because we don't get quiet we're we're in a world that we are constantly bombarded whether it's our phone or things that we have to look at or um you know just being still so in my world with regenerative health you and you know this you cannot heal your body if your body is not in a calm relaxed safe state your body yeah. can't heal it can't it can't take out the tar the, the junk in the trunk is what I call it. And the toxins. If your body is running around like chicken little with his head cut off saying the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And we live in a, the sky is falling kind of society today. Busy, busy, do, do go, 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 go until you collapse and either get sick or you um, just are exhausted. And so I teach people that a part of my eight essentials, which is the platform that I run my people through my clients is one of the eight essentials is your nervous system health and how how's your spiritual life? What what fun do you have? Um, how do you relax? What are your old traumas that you've been carrying around in your system? How do you respond to stress? And so circling back to SIRS, the chronic inflammatory response syndrome, the reason I believe that, I personally believe that people end up with chronic inflammatory response syndrome is their nervous system was either predisposed partially by genetics coming into this world. Um, and then it through epigenetics, which is the environment that your genes live in, which is what you do every day, what, how you think, what you use, what you drink, what you rub on yourself, the cleaning products, everything that surrounds your genes. If your nervous system gets whacked by either a toxin, a stress, uh, an illness, something like that, it has to be tended to because if you don't tend to your nervous system by self-care, slowing down, I love yoga. I love breath work. I spent a lot of time when I was going through PTSD. I did uh, neurofeedback. I did brain spotting. I did talk therapy. I did. Um, I went through an excellent provider, Dr. Amy Apigian. and I used um, her courses to become certified in a couple of her modules. And I learned a lot about trauma. I learned about the trauma cycle. And what I really, really, truly believe is that you can pour every kind of medicine and superfoods and supplements into your body. You can be doing everything right. But if you're not addressing how you react to stress and how you regulate your nervous system and how you self-soothe yourself, and if you're not flexing that muscle on a regular basis and you know what your go-to is if you get stressed out that's not alcohol that's not fast food that's not junk or drugs if you can find ways to self-soothe yourself you will be able to recover and regenerate from the cellular level but if your nervous system which i feel like is your twin sister is the immune system they have to be happy you know twins i grew up with a twin brother you know hmm. Both the twins have to be happy in order for lots of, you know, good things to be happening. So if you can have your nervous system and your immune system in good shape, the rest of it seems to fall into place. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, that's why I believe in holistic life coaching and self-coaching and, yep. you know, and um, 
prayer, you know, meditation and yes, um, all these things, they're, they're an important part of the healing process. Um, sometimes, uh, and, and that's what I believe miracles are, are founded on, you know, not always, but you know, sometimes, um, it's not really a miracle. It's, it's, um, but it might not be directly related to anything physical that you're doing. Um, it right. could very, be very well, um, be because of um your change in mindset um 100%. you know clinging on to faith and um yeah. and it peace be, and joy it, it and, things like like. and i think people need to have something bigger than themselves and i you know i'm a christian and i believe in god and i pray and all of that and i feel like that that has helped me get through the things that i got through i mean having ptsd from a lot of grief and losing you know family members within 10 weeks of each other and things like that. I mean, it was, it was rough. It was very rough. And I've lost four family members, my, my sister, my brother, my mom and dad. And it's, it's a lot. You have to have tools in your toolbox to deal with that um, in order to keep going. And, and it's not fun, but I, I, I'd like to teach people to figure out like, let's build your self-care toolbox, right? Everybody needs one and yours is different than mine. And mine's not going to work necessarily for you. But let's figure out what it is that you enjoy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Bobby, for spending time. And um, please let me know when your course, um, when your coaching program is launched. Um, so you said January, right? January? January, we're going to be doing the 12 weeks live for practitioners. And um, we are so excited, too, because we are creating a similar exact same content, but just um, not so practitioner based for clients. So we're hoping in 2025 that we will be able to offer um, practitioners an opportunity. And I, when I say practitioners, I'm talking the chiropractor, uh, receptionist, all the way to the manager, you know, massage therapists, Reiki people, um, regular MDs, anybody that has a wellness desire. Yes, uh, yes. Um, this because if you can start spotting people i guarantee you there was a quote that's actually in our course that um it's literally said from a doctor he said i believe there's, there's over 90 percent of the people coming into um doctor's offices have some form of toxicity that's creating symptoms in their body mm -hmm. which is huge and they're, they're not trained for it so that's yeah. really our mission is we want to train the people to spot it so that the suffering, because some of these people suffer for years. I mean, my partner in business, Heather, suffered for 27 years before somebody figured out she had Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. so, All right. Well, we do have to go now. But your website is b4uhealthcoaching.com. So, and you have a newsletter that people can keep in touch with you. And, and um, also some freebies there, I know. So, yeah. Yes. Um, thank you again, Bobby. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it very much. Have a good night. Too. Bye bye. Hi, everyone. My name is Ashley Algar, and I am the host of Expertise TV. And I'm very excited to be introducing you to our guest today, Mayim Vega. Now, Mayim Vega is a former NASA computer scientist turned holistic healer after facing a very personal health crisis, which the modern medical system could not resolve. In 2009, she founded Aruka.com, which offers an holistic healer certification program focusing on three pillars naturopathic herbalism, holistic life coaching, and online business and marketing to empower people to become holistic healers and achieve maximum impact in the world. Mayim combines her scientific background, natural healing methods, and faith in the creator and great physician to guide others on a path to personal and professional well-being. Mayim, it's clear that you are very passionate about the topic of holistic health and particularly helping people who are wanting to transition into this approach. How did you find yourself in this line of work and why is this work so important to you? Thank you, Ashley, for taking the time to speak with me. And I'd love to answer that question. So um, the way I found myself in this line of work starts with um, my story of when I transitioned from becoming a 
computer scientists at the NASA Ames Research Center to becoming an entrepreneur and building my first online business in digital marketing. And the reason why I did that is so that I could stay at home and be with my my, my newly born son at the time. And um, now I have seven children of my own and I wanted always wanted to homeschool them and just be there for them. And so that's why I became an entrepreneur. But my first, um, you know, my first few years as an entrepreneur was extremely difficult. And I thought it was healthy. But later on, you know, after all my studies, I realized there are a lot of things that I was doing that was not very healthy. They were not very healthy habits that I had. And um, what ended up happening was I got really sick and I thought I was on my deathbed. And I rushed, I was rushed to the emergency room. And um, the doctor actually thought that I had a brain tumor. Um, but after ex extensive testing and um, examination, she told me that there was nothing wrong with me. I just, you know, there's, I was experiencing a lot of pain, but they had nothing for me. There was nothing they could do for me. They, she said that she could give me some really strong painkillers, but that's really it. She couldn't really get rid of the problem. And so I took the painkillers, but again, painkillers and any pharmaceutical drug never address the root cause of illness and disease. And that's exactly why this line of work is so important to me and why I went on my own personal journey to become a holistic healer, to study nutrition, herbalism, holistic health, and holistic life coaching is because we all know people um, and maybe probably even ourselves who just like me, um, you know, went to the modern medical system because that's the expected thing to do. That's a normal thing to do. And, you know, try to get health and healing that way, but hit hit a, a dead end, hit a brick, a brick wall, you know, and we either got medications that didn't work or that only worked for a while or that caused side effects that were so terrible that we had to get on other medications, plural, and um, maybe even the medication or medications caused side effects um, that caused other health issues. And sometimes the health issues are worse than the first problem that you originally had. And we're on this ridiculous roller coaster of drug after drug after treatment after procedure because the modern medical system never addresses the root cause. And medical professionals who have woken up know this. And that's why I have medical professionals in my program, including, you know, doctors, nurses, nurse practitioners, medical technicians, et cetera, who are learning from me, who are, you know, taking the certification program because they realize that our system is broken and we need to fix it. It is our destiny as humanity to overcome all this, all this, all this, um, all this nonsense, really, you know, um, we can do better and we will do better. I know it. And that's why, you know, uh, in my certification program, sometimes I joke around. No, it's not really a joke, but I say, you know, I'm empowering not just holistic healers, but holistic warriors. We're in a battle. We're in a battle over our own health and healing to safeguard and protect that um, and that of our families and friends and community, of course, as well. Um, and we're also in a battle against very powerful people who, because of profits, um, like to suppress holistic health and healing truths to keep us just sick enough so that we need something, pharmaceuticals, um, but not well enough to ever get off them. That is truly the goal of uh, big pharma, of the pharmaceutical industry. It's not true. They don't want to heal us. They don't want to cure us. They want to keep us just sick enough so that we keep giving them their our, our money. And you know what? Me personally, I have better things to spend with my money, um, like on good food, um, you know, clean herbs, things that don't cause these ridiculous side effects. 
that we experience with pharmaceutical drugs. Thank you, Mayim. So that brings me to my next question. What are some of the key benefits of transitioning from the conventional healing approach to a holistic approach in health and healing? Okay, so that's another really great and important question. The key benefits of transitioning from conventional healing to a holistic approach are, right now I can think of three main reasons. Number one, the holistic approach is safer. Number two, the holistic approach is more effective. And number three, the holistic approach is the true approach that gets to the root cause, okay? Now I'd like to illustrate the first point, the safety of holistic medicine. Um, if someone who was taking some, you know, let's say blood pressure medication or something like that, visited me at my house, you know, let's say I invited them over for dinner and they, let's say they had to take some of their medicine and they dropped one of their pills, right? In my dining room or in my living room floor. Now I have very small children. I have a four-year-old. And what if my four-year-old found that pill on the floor and thought it was candy or something like that and put it in her mouth and ate it? What would happen? I would immediately have to call the poison control center to get that pill out of her system because those pills can have deadly side effects. But what if someone dropped a vitamin C pill or um, a tincture, you know, um, you know, and one of my children found it. For the most part, um, if they found it and took it, they might have a little diarrhea. Um, it might be really spicy on their tongue. And so they would stop taking it. But no, I wouldn't have to control the poison control center um, because vitamins and herbs and minerals are extremely like a thousand times safer than pharmaceutical drugs. Um, there's a few types of, um, you know, supplements that you might have to that call the poison control center, but for the most part, no, you won't have to do that because our body knows how to work with those substances. It is not a drug. It is, it is a healing tool. Okay. So completely safe. Also, exercise, diet, those are all safe, right? Sleep, those are all part of holistic health and healing. Completely safe, zero side effects. Now, let's talk about the effectiveness. The holistic approach is more effective. And um, the reason why we know this is because in my practice, and this is the, the experience of many holistic healers, when it comes to the uh, the conventional ways with the pharmaceutical drugs, as I said before, they don't deal with the root cause. They just mask symptoms. So, you know, you might take a cough suppressant, let's say, for example, but if you are not dealing with the root cause, why are you coughing in the, in the first place? Why do you have allergies? Why do you have the flu, et cetera? Why is your immune system not strong enough to overcome this in just a few hours or just a day or two overnight, you know? Um, why? Because you have not built up your immune system. Um, you haven't boosted it or lived the kind of life that you need to in order to avoid those um, common illnesses altogether. Um, I have a, one of my students is a medical doctor and she said that she used to take um, anti-allergy um, anti drugs every single week because of her allergies. The allergy drugs don't um, boost your immune system. They just suppress it. They just oppress your allergy symptoms. But when you have allergy symptoms, it's your body talking to you and, and telling you, hey, I can't deal with this. I can't deal with this thing that you're eating or this, this environment that you, you've just stepped into um, because of my, my state of being. It's I'm, I'm not strong enough. That's what your immune system is saying to you. But um, I taught her a really powerful vitamin protocol that actually boosts your immune system so that your immune system is strong enough to overcome allergies. And so that's the difference. It is effective because it is true. It is true holistic health and healing because it 
it strengthens your immune system. It doesn't silence it, like I said before. And the third issue is the root cause. Um, holistic health and healing deals with the, with the root cause and the conventional approach of drugs and surgery, et cetera, um, does not. That doesn't mean that you sometimes don't need surgery, for example, or in an emergency situation need a drug, but you're not dealing with the root cause. And if you deal with the root cause, um, you can make your problems either go away or become extremely minimal, safely, effectively, and naturally without poisoning your body and causing the roller coaster of side effects. Mayim, you have developed an incredible program that you've already mentioned called the Aruka Holistic Healer Certification Program, which you have specifically created for those looking to either transition into the holistic approach or for those who are wanting to grow in their knowledge and practice. Can you talk us through what differentiates this program from other similar programs that are currently out there? Thank you, Asha. Yes, the certification program um, at Aruka.com is really, truly incredible. And um, there's a few things that set it apart, actually many things, but I'd like to focus on a few. And one of them is that when I designed the program, um, I designed it for someone who is in my situation many years ago, someone who was um, a busy mom, who had a lot of work to do and you know a lot of things on her plate, but still wanted to empower herself um, with the knowledge of holistic health and healing for herself, for her family, you know, so she, so she could take care of her family, um, and and maybe even build a a career where, very specifically, she could stay at home, and just like me, be a stay at home mom, and you know, even a home homeschool mom. I've been a homeschool mom. My oldest is twenty now, and um, I homeschooled him the whole way. And uh, he's already graduated college and he's got a computer science degree, you know, and he, he has, he's an entrepreneur himself. Um, I, I instilled that dream in him. Um, so being able to, you know, you know, I, I, I was able to surpass my, my income at NASA um, and still homeschool my children. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome achievement. And so I wanted to empower um, people in my program to do exactly the same as, as I've done, to become a holistic healer, to have um, a, a successful online business so that they can have time freedom, location freedom, and financial freedom, meaning that there is no, um, there's no glass ceiling, you know, no one, no one who you need to get a raise from, you know, you just have to um, help people. That's how you, that's how I get paid is when I help people, right? And, and so that's what's one of the advantages. Another advantage is it's very, um, it's very hands-on and apprenticeship based. Um, and you could, you know, you could go to a college to study to become a naturopathic doctor or um, another holistic professional like a, a, a chiropractor, um, but it's going to take a lot more money, a lot more money and a lot more time as well. Um, this program can be completed in one year, but um, because, you know, all of my students pretty much are busy, busy professionals already um, or busy moms, um, it's it's self-paced. So, um, you know, if you have a lot of things on your plate, it's OK. It's still going to be there for you. There's not like a time limit. You're not going to, you know, your grade's not going to be lowered because you submit an assignment late or anything like that. It's self-paced. And so I've designed it for um, the, the busy mom or the working, the working woman. And another thing that sets it apart is we have three, you know, three core pillars in our program. One is that our students study naturopathic herbalism. And um, that, that takes up the, you know, the, the, the bulk of our program. And naturopathic herbalism includes studying the foundations of holistic health and healing, um, identifying toxins and detoxification, um, also nutrition and orthomolecular nutrition or megadose vitamin therapy, as well as herbalism, which includes also homeopathy and um, aromatherapy with essential oils. And also they study um, um, uh, excuse me, Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine. 
um, but it's it's mostly focused on Western um, medicine, uh, Western herbalism, excuse me. Um, and then the next uh, core pillar, the second one is holistic life coaching. And the reason why holistic life coaching is part of the program is to incorporate the mind spirit aspect of it, right? Um, you know, if if herbs and supplements are the alternative to pharmaceutical drugs, well, holistic life coaching is like the holistic alternative to psychiatry. It deals with the mind and the spirit. And spirit has to be part of it because we are spiritual beings. We're not just physical beings. We're also spiritual beings. Now, a lot of holistic health and healing schools um, are based on um you know, different religions, new age, or, um, you know, other pagan religions. And this program, because I'm Jewish, is based on um, the creator. It's based on the Bible and biblical principles, Judeo-Christian principles. And so therefore, I have a lot of um, people who are of that, of that uh, faith persuasion, um, you know, Jews, Christians, um, or people who maybe, you know, they don't really identify as Jewish or Christian, but um, they're open to it, or they grew up in in that in that faith, and they don't necessarily want all the the new age um, the new age um, spirituality. They want um, the kind of spirituality that they are comfortable with and used to. That's another thing that sets us apart. And life coaching is all about mindset and how to have um, healthy relationships with yourself with others. Um, of course, also, you know, with food and your body and lifestyle, um, holistic life coaching encompasses all of that. And it's a very important part of holistic health and healing, um, especially because stress is often the root cause of many illnesses, common illnesses, and also chronic um, diseases. So, um, you know, that mind and spirit aspect is very important. And the third aspect is online business marketing. And again, the reason why that's important is because, um, as I told you, I really want uh, my students to uh, to thrive and to be able to, you know, have that time freedom, uh, location freedom, and financial freedom, which, a, um, which an online business provides. But also because, you know, um, uh, there's not a lot of jobs for herbalists, you know, or life coaches even. And so we really have to be entrepreneurial and um, it's very, very rewarding. And because of my background, you know, with my digital marketing business, um, you know, my first business, um, I can really help people in that department. Thanks so much, Mayim. So I love the power of testimony and hearing people's personal experiences or journeys. Can you share some of the success stories that might be coming to mind or testimonials from past students? Yes, we certainly have um, a lot of success stories and testimonials, and um, we'll we'll show some of those testimonials at the end of our our talk today in in this video. But um, uh, I could talk about a few of them that um, that are you know um, you know maybe recent. Um, one of them is um, one of my students. She wanted to. She told me that she wanted to become a tr nutritionist, but um, you know, I guess life's life's her life's journey didn't really allow for that. Um, so when she heard about my program, my certification program, when when it first launched, she joined, and um, she really wanted to help her husband who had been suffering from colitis under the care of doctors for about twenty years, ever since he was in the military. And he was going from medication to medication and, um, you know, suffering with uh, diarrhea and insomnia and restless legs and indigestion and, you know, all these terrible things that um, colitis can cause. And so I actually created a custom module for her um, to help her husband with that. And in two months, she helped her um, her husband get off the medication and heal from colitis using food and um, herbs and natural holistic healing methods. So that was a great accomplishment for her. And, um, you know, I get people, you know, contacting me saying that I helped them grow their hair back or um, actually someone said, oh, you helped, you helped save, um, you helped, you helped, you helped save 
a little girl's life, you know, just beautiful, wonderful things like that. You helped, um, you helped me heal, um, my daughter, you know, you helped me, um, grow, you know, um, regrow my teeth. So I don't have pain from cavities anymore, you know, like just all these wonderful testimonies. And, um, that's the reason why I, you know, I, I love doing what I do and, um, you know, and, and, and you will too, you know, if, if you join the program, it's so rewarding and fulfilling to understand and to know that you are, are helping people, truly helping people, um, in ways that they can't get, um, in the modern medical system. It's so rewarding. Incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that, Mayim. Um, I can only imagine, uh, the sense of reward um, when people start applying, uh, these principles uh, to their lives and actually see a uh, change and and transformation and um, and for somebody as passionate as you are around this topic uh, to witness that and to be a part of that I imagine that the the reward is uh, is is priceless um, so a another common question that arises is once someone completes the program, what are some of the practical steps one would take in order to start a successful career um, in holistic health? Okay, that's a great question. And that's actually what the um, third pillar of our program is all about is, you know, what do you do? Um, practical steps on what you would do to to start a successful career in holistic health. And in that program, we we teach our our students how to create a high ticket transformational health coaching program that really helps people deal with a serious a serious um, uh, a problem. Um, a serious health issue. And that doesn't mean that it it's it's a deadly, you know, problem, but it can be something that really affects their life, right? Even skin skin disorders can really affect your life, right? Um, even though it's not necessarily deadly. Um, weight loss could be something that is a serious, dealing with a serious issue. There's so many different types of health coaching programs that one can make, you know, anxiety, um, depression, um, you know, uh, hormonal issues, um, et cetera. So they build, uh, you know, and, you know, it's part of the program. They will do this while they're still in the program and will support them um, the whole way um, is to build that first high ticket health coaching program and then um, set up their online assets, such as their website, their social media, um, you know, a, a, a video sales letter, uh, press releases, you know, podcasts, all those things that, um, that, online entrepreneurs need in order to connect with people, get their message of health and healing out there um, and build and grow and scale their business. Thank you so much, Mahim. It's been so great talking with you today. Um, but before we close, for those that would like to get started on the journey to becoming an holistic healer and wanting to learn a little bit more about the certification program, how do they go about contacting you? Yes, it's been wonderful talking to you today as well. And for all those who would like to get started on their journey to become a holistic healer and learn more about the certification program, um, all they need to do is um, visit the website, www.aruka.com, A-R-U-K-A-H.com. And um, uh, dig into that and schedule a discovery call. And I would love to to be your, your mentor, your health coach, your teacher in guiding you to become a holistic healer, to become the, the healer of your home and your family and your community and to, and to help you build um, a profitable online health coaching business. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Mayim. So there we have it, folks. If you are ready to move forward in your own journey of becoming a holistic healer, then you can visit the website at www.aruka.com where you can schedule your first discovery call. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure.